And we're recording. You ready? Welcome to another episode of Business Bros. I had to do it slowly. <laughs> Hopefully it worked a little better, but you know, we, we just make it happen anyways. How bad was it? How bad was it? It's it was a, a little awkward. It's a little awkward. You're a little muffled, by the way, your, your sound. So Am I? Yeah, that's better right there if you do that. So, all right. all right, ladies and gents, uh, welcome to another episode of Business Bros. My name's Hernan. I'm the host of the Business Bros podcast, along with my co-host, the insurance bro, James Sias, as you can see behind me, Pipeline Insurance. There you go. And we got a good show for you guys today. We got uh, April McCowicks from, uh, I didn't even get your brokerage. What brokerage are you with? What? We only have the best brokerage ever. Come on, guess. The best brokerage ever in uh, San Diego. Number uh, one fastest growing company ever. Are you going to go with the XP? Oh. oh my God. Okay. So first of all, it's big block realty. All right. All right I'm, gonna, I'm totally going to get all the guys. So you, you have a lot of connections with big block and, and oh, yeah. as far as interviews and stuff goes. And, um, I did remember watching Erica Danda's um, interview where you said all the cool people are with big block. They are. I do know a lot of cool people. <laughs> You know what? I and and you know it's funny. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. <laughs> you know what? I I, I do uh, pitch a lot of stuff on on EXP. It has great tremendous opportunity. But I always say the culture that you guys have at, at Big Block and the organization that that you guys have, uh, Sam, the great leadership that you guys have over here, it, you guys have an amazing brokerage. So I can't knock the brokerage at all. So all right, cool. So Big Block Realty. Sweet. Big Block Realty in the house. Yes. <laughs> Another big green block. Here we go. See, all for the, the record, that was going to be my guess. That was uh, yeah. Oh, see, yeah, no, <laughs> in <laughs> hindsight, of course, right? In hindsight, <laughs> I was like, you got, you got to throw me on the spot. I was like, well, there's a number of different cool brokerages. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. I'm sure in your position, you're probably like, I don't want to say. Uh, I'll throw it out there. I don't care if I make a. You know, it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I don't care if I make a fool of myself. Have you seen my latest parody? Yes, I did. <laughs> right, so that was great. It's okay if you laugh at me. I'm okay with that. All right, ladies and gents, before we get started with April, 365 pairs of shoes by the end of the year. Thank you to all those of you who've already donated. And if you got a brand new pair of shoes or you got a used pair of shoes, gently used, um, or you want to donate cash, hit James up 619-884-0045 or james at csfirst.com. Go right out in this Harley and pick them up. Not out to Santa Barbara, although maybe he might make a ride out there. I don't know. That's kind of a beautiful spot, but it'll have to be like a vacation type trip. I don't think he'll go out there just to pick up the shoes. How far is Santa Barbara? <laughs> Santa yeah, Barbara. Four and a half hours. Four and a half? Fine. Yeah. yeah. We'll make no, it no worth problem. our while. I'll get everybody collective to get all everybody's shoes. And there you go. That sounds fun. Boom. Okay, cool. There you go. All right, ladies and gents. So let's get on the, uh, let's get on the show with April. April, uh, welcome to the program. And I always start off the, with every guest. I want to know about your background. What did you do prior to getting into real estate? Yeah. So cool. I guess I can kind of start from the beginning. I grew up military brat. Uh, my stepdad was in the army, so moved around a lot. I was in the southern states, so a lot of people say, "Oh, you're you're from the south." Usually, I'll say I'm from the south. They're like, "Oh yeah, SoCal." No, I'm actually from like Texas and those southern states. So, um, and then married, and and my husband was in the air force as well, and that's what brought me to California. Um, I'm a mom, and so for the majority of my young adult life, I was a stay-at-home mom. I went to school online. You know, I I did all the the things that I needed to do to get to where I am today. But it wasn't until I was in my thirties. We won't say how old I am right now, <laughs> but it wasn't until I was in my thirties that I actually decided to take the leap and go into real estate. Uh, right before I did sales, I worked for a couple of years um, running a commercial property management company in Washington. And so that was pretty cool. That was my real intro into the world. Um, obviously, I was from the admin perspective, the management side, um, but then I started seeing those checks for a yeah. <laughs> and I was like, hmm, I think I might be able to do that. So, they, get, they get a little convincing after those uh, extra, the comma and the extra zeros. Well, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> I kind of like the commas. Um, so then moved to uh, California at six years ago. And before I even moved here, I said, you know what? I don't care what happens. I'm just going to dive right into real estate. I'm going to do sales. And then that's all she wrote. So as soon as we got here, um, we got here on a Sunday. That next Friday, I was in a real estate class in my local area. Like I was ready to do it. So it was pretty cool. Full board, just jump right in. 
jump right in. That's how you do it. So you knew, you knew then that that was the field you were going to go into um, when you were working at the, with the other company. You just knew like, you know what? I think sales is going to be my gig. Yeah, I was scared. I'm not going to lie. I was very fearful to do any kind of real estate or excuse me, any kind of permission only job. Um, before I would even been introduced to the world of real estate, I sold insurance. And so I refused to do like a commission job because I was so scared. I had babies to take care of, you know, and um, early on in my adult life, I was a single mom. So with that, I needed stability. So it was just like that. I don't think I could do this. I don't, I don't like the instability of not having that paycheck. But that's when I said, you know what, this is going to be a new area. When we moved to California, I have nothing to lose. I'm just going to do it. So I decided, and then I did it. How much did that fuel you though? You know what I mean? Like, like knowing that your kids need shoes, clothes, going out money. I don't know how your kid, how old your kids are, you know, whatever is going on in their life, you have to put a roof over their head. All that stuff is like bearing down on you. And you decided to go full on sales commission only. Like how much of that pushed you to, to do what you needed to do? All of it, all of it pushed me because my kids um, have the opportunity in, in this life right now to, of course, be better than the life that I had. I'm able to do those things for them, not because of where I've, I'm at now with my real estate career, but because I have a stronger mentality than maybe I grew up around growing up. So my story is all about survival and um, pushing through. So even if I made $2 an hour, which there are many times where I did make that, um, I knew I was going to make a better life for my kid because I had to. I wanted them to have that. So that was always my fuel. If I was working four jobs, again, at one point I was, I was working four jobs just to make sure that my kid was fed. I never once got tired to the point where I wanted to give up because that is my fuel. Like, And your kid doesn't just, that why doesn't burn out. Like you, mm-hmm. you get tired. You, you know what I mean? Like you, yeah, you can say, yeah, I want to give up or whatever, but you don't because that is always burning, you know? So when you have something that big, your why that that's big. Um, yeah. You just keep going no matter how hard it is. Well, let, let's hover on that mindset for a second. So, so you, uh, you obviously came from a background, your parents and, and up until the point you got into real estate, you were, uh, getting a salary, getting a paycheck with that consistency factor, right? Everything was coming in. You were making it paycheck to paycheck, surviving what you needed to survive. Um, and then you had this mind shift in, in your own head. You, you've changed the way you look at the world. The cha- you've changed the way you value what you earn. How much of that do you think is, is going to be projected onto your kids now? Like, do they, are they going to remember the mom struggling paycheck to paycheck? Or do you think you've pushed them in a direction where like, you can be anything you want to be. You can do anything you want to do and you can earn anything you want to if you put the the work into it. Well, my kids, I have two girls. They're seven years apart. So my oldest child, who is now an adult, a young adult, 18 now, um, she got to see both sides. She got to see the mom struggling. Now, my youngest child, was she was too young to see all the, the, the extra jobs and all the different stuff happening. Um, but it doesn't matter, I think, in my personal parent, uh, opinion, how much my youngest daughter saw, it's what I teach her. And so although she has, both my girls have everything in the world they could ever ask for, they still, I still teach them how to earn it. I still teach them the values of integrity and working hard and hustle. So, so I'm hoping that they see me every day, you know, grinding it out. They see that I'm working hard. Um, but they also see that I'm coming home and making sure that there's that work-life balance that I'm spending time with them. But while I'm spending time with them, I'm constantly in their ear. Hey, you can do, you know, you don't just say you can do whatever you want. You just, there's just something there where you can just say really, truly, and let me show you how. And so that, I think that's the difference. So whether they saw it or not, or remember those times, it's still my job to continue to build them up, you know, and to encourage them, to show them how to to be what they want to be, whatever that might be. So when, when you were, uh, you, you said you were a stay at home mom for a while, right? So Mm -hmm. you had, you, you've seen both sides of the world. You, you've seen the world where you're stay at home and that by the way is a tough job. I'm just saying like Mm -hmm. I was, I I stayed home and and raised the kids when they were little and then I would run my businesses in the afternoon, the evening while the wife was at work because she, she would teach. So I understand that 
aspect of it. But you've had one one mold where um, where you would say it's like a traditional woman's role, and now you're you know boss lady, you're kicking ass in the as a woman in today's you know world where where women are encouraged and pushed and 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 allowed to do much bigger things that they were always capable of. How do you how do you see both both sides, and how do you balance that out? And what was that uh, transition like? Okay, well, the transition was very hard. I'm just going to say that right now. For any any woman out there, or I guess really any person out there that goes from staying at home, knowing that role, and then trying to go into being a hustler, a grinder, someone who has big, huge goals, and in order to reach those goals, you have to take massive action. So from going from this role to this role, it's completely different. Um, and it is a struggle. If you don't if you do not set boundaries for your life, you will be burnt out, which I did. I reached a burned out stage uh, two years into my career. Um, you will be stressed out. Your kids will be like, where are you, mom? Like what, you know, you're, you're here, but you're checked out. So um, for me, the transition was really hard. I had to take a step back two years in because um, I thought, God, you know, I'm, I'm doing all this, you know, I was top producing agent my second year in the business. And that meant that I was working around the clock constantly, 24 seven, I was answering my phone at 10 o'clock at night, I was getting up at four in the morning, so that I can make sure that I make calls and whatever was happening. And so I had burning, you know, the midnight oil and and just not there. Um, so for me, it took me surrounding myself with other people that had done it and that continue to do it. So to be the, the big bot, uh, you know, the boss B, you know, we won't say the word, you know, X-rated here, but you know, be the, the boss B and still be a mom, you know, be a, And so for me, I had to actually seek those people out and say, how are you doing this? And the most important thing was if you have 10 minutes or two hours with your kids or your family or whoever's important to you, that's their time you cut it all off. No one else is more important at that moment. And so that made a huge difference in my life. Um, and now what I, what I practice is one Sundays, I don't work. I do not work. I just tell everybody, sorry, not working, not doing it. This is my family time. So Sundays are devoted to my family, my time, my getaway time, whatever I want to do, but also time blocking, um, being able to actually say, okay, this time is for this, this time's for that. And it's not just for business, it's for family too. So this time is my home. This is my kid's time. This is um, our date night time. This is whatever. So time blocking was huge to help with that transition. And uh, now that I have a team of 10 people, it's even easier because now I can scale back uh, more of my weekend time to be with my family. So it's, it's becoming a little bit more well-rounded, but it is hard. It's hard. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, that, that calendar is huge. The, the time blocking and setting things up is huge. But I want to drill down a little more on what, what was the struggle on when you were talking about, you know, you, you hit a burnout stage, you know, and we all do, especially when we get into business, since the first time we're getting into business, we, don't, we just don't know what we don't know. And so, you know, I like to drill down on, on some of my guests and be like, what, what was that struggle? Where did you find yourself, you know, thinking like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Because originally you got into it thinking, I'm going to love this. This is going to be awesome. And then time goes on and you're like, this is too much. Like something's got to change. What, what was going on in your life at that point where you were thinking like, I don't know if this is the thing for me. So I, I absolutely still love the, the industry. Um, I think there's just so much to, to be gained and so many opportunities. Um, but the, the gosh, you know, when you're working nonstop and everybody is taking all of your time, you forget yourself. Um, I think when you originally reached out to me, you were on my Instagram page, where um, I basically talked about my story and how like I would rather work 800 hours or 100 hours or whatever hours building up my empire than to sit down and take 30 minutes to work out and focus on myself. Um, and so that is one of the biggest struggles, I think, for me. And so for, for when I started, I was doing everything that I could to make everybody happy, not including myself uh, and not including my family. It was more or less, I have to do this. I have to prove myself. So I'm, you know, calling all hours. I'm at the mercy of any client. As soon as they snap their fingers, I'm jumping up. I've got to do this. Mind you, I didn't have a sphere of influence here. 
I didn't have a network. I didn't even know street names when I got here. So I had to work extra hard. And here I am in a smaller area where it's so competitive and it's old money and people only know their cousins, brothers, sisters, you know what I mean? It's just like, how do I do this? So for me, it was literally working around the clock and then the rejection, the rejection. I don't know you, you're a new agent. Who are you? The lack of training at my brokerages. You know, I was struggling to, to make sure that I, I knew everything I needed to know. I was trying to be resourceful and having to figure things out myself. So it's just all this pressure all the way around trying to become a, fan, a great agent um, to service my clients with the highest of integrity because my motto was service before self. So I wanted to make sure that no, not, none of the customer service was skewed because I was so busy, which caused a lot of, you know, stress. And again, I just got to a point where I had gained probably 30 pounds. Um, I wasn't eating very well at all. Obviously I was on the go all the time. I was grabbing, you know, fast food. I was eating whatever I was drinking heavily because happy hour, you got to go. And you know, you're, you're trying to meet up with clients and you're offering them drinks. And you know, I was broke for a long time because even though I was making like, I think the first year I made maybe 60 grand, the second year I made 300, you know, I was always putting all my money back into the business, trying to build something, build something, build something. Um, so it just got too much. I, I was getting a divorce. My kids hated me. Um, it was, it was literally, I was falling apart. Uh, and it took me leaving for one month, hitting a wall saying, you know what? I don't care. I talked to my brokers. I said, I'm out of here for one month. I got to go. Otherwise I'm going to just quit everything. So I need some take some space. I was working with at that time, 18 different clients, active clients. And I left it all and I didn't care. I didn't care where that money was going. I, I literally said, I'm done. And so if it weren't for my two brokers at the time, actually stepping up and saying, go, we're going to handle everything for you. I probably would have quit. Um, so I, I definitely praise my brokers for being there for me when that happened, because I was able to get away. I got to reflect on what was happening and started to actually create those boundaries later on. So, so you're, you're, you're basically saying that success was kind of a poor teacher at that point. You, you worked your ass off. You, you started closing deals, 18 clients at one time. That's phenomenal, by the way, in a market that you knew nobody in, right? Yeah. So what, what did you reflect on? What clicked in your head that said, all right, I'm going to go back to this, but this time I'm doing it a little bit different. This time, you know, I'm, I'm going to prioritize X, Y, Z. I'm going to set up my schedule. What clicked in your head? What was the thing that you probably sat back and thought of and said, if I don't change this, I'm, I'm never going back. So it's a little emotional. Um, and it's kind of a personal thing that, that kind of clicked. So when I went away, I thought about, of course, my life, you know, where had, where I came from, why was I striving so hard to be successful? And it all came back to my childhood. Um, my mother, she just passed away in March, but, uh, she had a really hard life. Uh, she was always a laborer. She was a truck driver at one time. She was a waitress. She was this, she had to always working hard up until the very last day that she passed away. Um, and for me, while she taught me hard work, she taught me how to just basically grind it out no matter what. I did not want to end up like her in the sense that I did, I wanted something better, um, in terms of my financial stability. I didn't want to have to work day by day there, you know, and just be in this rut for all of my life. Um, so I'm sitting there and I'm thinking about everything. I see that my kids are extremely, you know, disappointed in me and, and I'm not there for them. I'm missing opportunities in their lives. Like I said, I was getting a divorce. Um, it all came back to, are you your mother right now? I know it sounds kind of crazy, but it's, it was that moment where I was like, wow, because when I was growing up, my mom worked so hard that she was never home and um, she wasn't there for me as a kid. I didn't get to do the sports and I didn't get to do all of those things because I had to stay home and babysit my kids or my, my siblings. Um, and so that was like a moment. It was something that just kind of hit me hard. And I was like, okay, do you want to do this? Yes. Okay. What are you going to do that's going to change everything? And how are you going to approach that? So for me, it was, 
um, I knew that my kids had to be a priority because I did not want them growing up resenting me like I had with my mom. Um, of course, everything is different now. You, know, you see things as a kid, you see that she had to survive. I didn't know that at the time. My kids are fine. We don't have to survive, quote unquote, not anymore. But I was still, I had different goals, you know, and, and it came back to the whole reason why I wanted to be successful in the first place, which was I want financial stability. I want to be able to do whatever I need to do. If that means take care of family members because they're on their deathbed, which is something that's true today, I'm able to give to them. You know, I'm able to do these things. So anyways, it just kind of came down to that. Um, and that lit the fire back in me. It's like, okay, well, you're going to go and do this because you can, um, you're a badass. Sorry for the language. It's all right. Um, <laughs> you're, you know, you're, you, you've got this, your kids deserve it. You deserve it. You busted your butt so long and so hard. So you're going to do this. Um, and then that's when I was like, okay, I just have to figure out how, because that was another thing. It was like, all right, well, I only know how to work 24 seven. I only know how to be at their beck and call. And it was uncomfortable telling people, I'm sorry, but I don't work Sundays anymore. When the expectation was, Oh, April's around the clock. Like she, she'll, she'll do whatever, you know. But was that, was that your interpretation of what people thought or was that what actually people thought because you know my doctor my dentist those professionals are not available 24 7 right I make an appointment with them all the time so you know I I think it's more of a of what you you put that on yourself and believe me because I do the same thing I know that aspect always on right it never shuts off absolutely oh yeah absolutely because in my mind I was thinking oh man if I'm gonna be the best I have to be available all the time but you can't be the best and be available all the time you have to have time and this is something that I had to learn the hard way you have to make time for yourself you have to sit back and let things roll and you take a couple deep breaths otherwise you'll never be the best so uh, I tell my team all the time like schedule out your vacations they're very important when you're sick Stop making calls that day. I love your hustle, but it's time to relax. It's time to recoup because you can't be any better if you're not well, if you're not 100%. It's a hard lesson I had to learn, but yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's, that's intense. So let me, let me ask yeah. you now, after you've gone through all that, you've had the, the high income years, you've had the emotional distress. How, how would you now define success? Like, what does that look like for you you know, going forward, now that you've had the ups and downs, now you've had, you know, the peaks and the valleys, now that you've struggled, now that you've, you've busted your butt, you know, you've worked the 24 hours a day, how would you define what success looks like? If April was, could look back and say, this is me at the top of my game, what does that look like to you? Yeah. So it's, um, it's, it's having a well-balanced life, um, truly being able to have a quality of life, um, being able to spend time and do things with my family and being able to actually build other people up. Uh, so before it was all about the next transaction, the next, this, the next, that, you know, and, and I loved it because I was, I knew I was helping them with whatever journey they were on. I took it very personally and said, okay, you know, this is a big investment in your life. This is what my focus is. Well, now I'm taking that, that, um, passion of help and instilling that into my teammates. You know, I'm, I'm helping those that are hungry, that want to learn, I'm able to help them not do the things that I had to go through, um, kind of like the mama bear thing. Um, <laughs> and so that's, that's really, that is really ultimately, if my family's happy and I'm, in, I'm making memories with them and I'm building people up and they're super successful, all the other stuff, all the, the money, that, all that, that naturally happens. When you're doing what you really love and you're happy, all the rest just kind of falls into place. And I'm, I'm growing like crazy organically. Um, my team is, is learning every day. They're, you know, they're doing their best. They're doing their thing. They're brand new agents. I have 10 brand new agents and they're all doing deals within their first couple of months. I mean, it's just, it's a phenomenal thing. And I can say, you know what, my success and my, um, passion and all, all the experiences and everything that I have, I'm able to give back. And so that to me is success. Um, just able to give back. That's ultimately what it's all about. I love that answer. It's a very, very good answer. <laughs> cool. All right. 
we are rounding the bend on time here. So I'm going to ask you the last okay. couple of questions. All right. So first of all, who do you think would be a good guest to have on the podcast? Oh, I don't know all the guests that you've had. So I might, and of course it's going to be a big locker because of course, you know, who would be really awesome. Um, that's not necessarily um, a part of a real estate um, company, but a um, couple of big wigs out there. So there's um, Roland Frazier. I don't know if you've heard of him. Mm -mm. He He's a phenomenal brain. Like this man, uh, uh, he used to be an attorney for Tony Robbins. Um, he is the founder and co-founder of multiple uh, mastermind groups, massive billionaire companies. I mean, this guy is phenomenal. So if you want to bring value to anybody, you're going you're gonna to hit him up. Um, but in the real estate world, of course, um, I would actually go with uh, Jed Bratt. He, um, I don't know if you've, you've uh, interviewed him or not. Not yet. He's pretty cool. He's, he's a, a no BS kind of guy. He's a realtor in, uh, with Big Block down in San Diego. He uh, used to be in the service. Cool guy. But yeah, I love his approach because he's a no BS kind of guy. Totally different um, style of sales and he just kind of gives it to you and it's just cool to do. So. Yeah. Sweet. All yeah. right. Well, make yeah, sure Brad. make sure we'll tag him on the. Uh, I'll tag you on the Facebook, and then uh, you can tag him, and then we'll we'll reach out to both of them, see what happens. Yeah. Cool. That sounds perfect. All right. So you got two bros on here. One he didn't say very much. He's on there though. So uh, we're mm -hmm. gonna call. We always we started this segment called Ask the Bros. So feel free to ask us any question you like, and we'll see what what you throw at us. Come on, curveball, fastball. Curveball. Okay. So um, one of, I'm always curious about people's goals. So what is it that you and your partner um, really want to achieve? Now you're, you do real estate, you have a podcast and that from your parody, it sounds like you were a teacher too. Yeah. Um, so, and then an insurance company, I mean, you guys have a lot of go lot going on. What does that ultimate goal look like? You want to go that one? Or I got, I got an answer. You want to go at it, James? Go for it. Go, you go first. All right, cool. So, um, in the thing that each one of our companies has, whether it's teaching, whether it's in real estate, whether it's in insurance, the thing that we have in common is that we're, we're trying to build other people up, right? I think we've, we've gotten to a position where we're at least able to maintain what we want in our own lives. And we're to the point where now in order for us to really measure our marker of success, it's how many additional people we can bring to the level of success that they want. So if, if, you know, whether it's in our insurance industry or whether it's real estate agents, whether it's students that I have in high school, if I can give them the tools or the, the access to a network or whatever it is, open a door or a window or whatever to get them to a level where they may not have been able to get to, give them an idea, plant a seed, whatever it is to get them to the next level, then I feel like we've achieved our idea of success. And, and ultimately, ultimately, I know that no matter what aspiration or dream I have, I know I can't get there unless I help other people achieve theirs. So that's, that's ultimately what we like, what, what I think we're doing in any of our industries. Like we, we talk about insurance, for example, we sell insurance. And if you have homeowners policies, by all means, bring them. If you have, you know, workers comp or, you know, any, any type of insurance, we'll help you with that. But really we want to be able to bring insurance into your line of business and teach you how to generate another income stream. That's where we're really at. We're into training somebody to generate revenue um, in whatever business they want to get into. So if you need to elevate yourself in some way, hopefully we're doing that by bringing value to you on a regular basis. Love it. Love yeah. it. How you doing? How you like that one, James? That was good? <laughs> Heck yeah, that was uh, definitely a lot better than what I would have said. <laughs> <laughs> mine's, a, mine's a little bit more simple. There's I think he needs the happy hour. He There's does a, need the happy hour. You're winding down. <laughs> There's a beach right there. I just want to be on the beach. Like, most of the day, grab the laptop, pull it up, do some work, back to the beach. That See? sounds amazing. <laughs> all right. Yes, let's all learn how to just do that and make billions and billions of dollars. Yeah, that's yeah, the way yeah, it works, yeah. right? Well, Three maybe, commas or more. <laughs> what it, what it, Absolutely. For me, it really is about, about building businesses. Mm -hmm. I, Hernan has a passion for the startups. He loves taking people who have brand new, fresh ideas and helping them <clears throat> implement those ideas and get something started. And I'm um, the more long term. Okay, now we have the the thing started. <clears throat> How do we develop the system and processes to make it so that you don't actually have to be there for the for the most part, and things are still getting done? Building a true business. 
building the business. Cool. So between cool. the two of us. All right, April, I want to give you the last couple minutes here. Um, tell people how to get a hold of you. I know you're in Santa Barbara. Um, so I'm going to, I'm definitely going to send you a copy of this video and audio so that you can use it, uh, chop it up, use it however you like. So uh, this is your time. How do people get a hold of you if they want to work with you? Awesome. So um, any outlet, I'm everywhere. Uh, you can definitely go to my website at www.macgroupre.com. Uh, you can also reach me on my phone at 805-742-4221. Uh, I almost gave out my personal stuff. <laughs> I'm off on Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> and or you can just uh, come on up here. You'll see me everywhere. Signs, banners. Call me. We'll go happy hour. We'll get some. We'll get some drinks. It'll go to the beach. I'll take James to the beach. Boom. <laughs> Yeah, I've been I've been to Santa Barbara. It's a lot of nice, cool spots out there. Lots of little bar areas. I mean, it's a beautiful spot. Oh yeah. So yeah, if I ever get out there again, I'm gonna hit you up. Perfect. Look forward to it. We'll have a blast. <laughs> All right, April. Hey, thanks for cool. being on the show. Really, really thanks appreciate you uh, taking the time to come on. Thank you. Ladies and gents, quick reminder, 365 pairs of shoes by the end of the year. So if you have shoes to donate, new, used, cash, hit up James, 619-884-0045 or james at csfirst.com. And of course, if you would like to add insurance into your line of business or you have policies that you need written, homeowners, life, uh, commercial, whatever you need, hit James up, 619-884-0045 or james at csfirst.com. And if you would like to be a guest on the program or you want to check out our parody, super funny, um, check it out. It, it, find us at Business Bros Pod. You can find it on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you find our content. So thank you guys very much. April, again, thank you very much. And that's all we got for you guys today. Peace. And I'm out. Cool. Cool. Thanks.